If you've watched the channel for a while, you know I like to do things a little differently sometimes, and since it's Super Bowl Sunday, I figure we'll talk about something just a little bit different. And uh, of course, we know that I have a romance comic out on Kickstarter right now. It is called All Eyes on Ashley, and uh, we are, of course, uh, wrapping up the production on that. I just got the first draft of the lettering in for the comic. But comic books have not just been superhero genres. One of the problems with like the Silver Age is like comics became synonymous with superheroes. But before that, before like this like sort of revolution of Marvel comics, Mar comics really were all sorts of genres. You had science fiction, you had crime, you had romance, and that was one of the big ones out there. Jack Kirby really was the pioneer of that. Now, Jack Kirby is famous for creating the Fantastic Four, for doing Marvel's Thor, uh, and among other books, of course, The New Gods for DC Comics. But he got his start here, and this was what was clocking money for these guys back in the 1940s and 1950s. Uh, Joe Simon wrote the vast majority of them at the beginning. Of course, then he went over to Marvel Comics, and things changed a little bit from there. But uh, there's a few books that collect these. I'm going to go over all the stuff that's collected for Jack Kirby romances right now, if you're interested in checking those out. Pretty easy to find, uh, like, uh, you know. It's not a lot of books, but uh, some of these are out of print, so it is kind of hard to find. Uh, and we're also going to talk about the tradition of how this works and how it's not just a girl's genre. This was not just something that was just made for uh, young women to read. Of course, like everybody was reading these. Uh, something changed later on, uh, just the perception of romance. And of course, that became uh, known kind of as a women's genre. And it's mostly because of the Harlequin novel books. Like those are designed for women uh, at the end of the day is like but these comics weren't necessarily the case they were all over the map and there's some really good stories which i'll talk about some of them in this video as well so please check out my kickstarter that links in the description below uh it is called all eyes on ashley and i would really love for you to uh um just check this out of course because we are making comics in the tradition of jack kirby we're doing different genres we are exploring different concepts and making really awesome moves and awesome waves and of course uh this is the book right here you can tell it's got beautiful art i got mike s miller to do it and this is from the perspective of a young man so uh it is a men's romance at the end of the day now before you get all cringy with the topic with that um just know that of course like, uh, this is something that is about this guy, Spencer, and he's going after this gal, Ashley. He's trying to figure out how to pursue her properly, and that's what we're trying to communicate here. So good stuff. It transcends genre. We're doing something completely different. We're not just copy-pasting, uh, you know, 90s superhero books like a lot of people out there uh, on Kickstarter or whatnot. We're doing something different and doing something really innovative, and of course, I hope you'll check it out. Grab that link, like I said. Now, uh, let's get into Kirby. Again, like, these are the straight romances which just don't have any, like, you know, supernatural stuff and all that. But if you look at what made the Silver Age something that was big, that what made Stan Lee's stuff stick out is the soap opera element. The reason you care about Fantastic Four so much was the dynamic between Reed Richards and Sue. Like, their relationship meant a lot. If you look at Spider-Man, the same thing. Like, I mean, his love of Gwen Stacy and then Mary Jane is what made the character last all the way. Those those personal moments in the stories are great. Sure, the action scenes look cool, uh, but, like, those aren't the memorable stuff for uh, as much as you look at as the character moments. And that's what Jack Kirby and Joe Simon really defined in their books. So let's get into, like, what we've got right here and the options that we have. So what's interesting is the place to start is uh, Young Romances uh, number two. And uh, even though it's called number two, these are like the first books. And so these books are uh, mostly from a book called Love Romance, uh, which was published by Atlas slash Marvel uh, in uh, the 30s and or the 40s and 50s. And these are the first ones. So these are the early issues that were done in 1947 through 1949. And uh, oddly, they published their first book that they did with it, Young Romances 1, uh, was uh, later stuff. So this right here was from kind of the late 50s for the most part. So so you get uh, Jack Kirby really has like honed his craft by this point. The, the stories in here with Joe Simon are really good. Uh, and you can tell just like the, the art is really just like refined. It's like the Kirby stuff that you get to know uh, from the Marvel stuff. Look at this. Uh, look at the beautiful uh, women that he draws through here. That's one thing Kirby had over Steve Ditko is I, I don't think Steve Ditko really drew uh, beautiful women quite as well as like Jack Kirby did. Uh, oh, I want your man. <laughs> Some scandalous stuff for the late 50s here. But 
Uh, that's not all that, that they were doing. They started a company called Mainline Comics for a while. And so the Young Romances, these are published by Fantagraphics Books, and they are uh, a couple hundred page books, uh, and it's very similar to like the Steve Ditko archives, like in like size uh, and like in print quality and things like that. And so that's what you'll get out of these. And they're not complete. They're like a, a, a sampling, basically. Uh, and that bugs me about Fantagraphics. They never just like did the things completely in order. They're starting to do that now. They're doing the complete Atlas line as something separate. But if you just want to read the Jack uh, Kirby uh, romance stuff, and this is the stuff that started the genre. This is the stuff that got big. This was huge in the 1950s. These were selling hundreds of thousands of units. You want to talk about like Spider-Man or whatever today, which is selling like 50,000 units. These destroyed <laughs> those uh, just because they were one. So well done. The craft is beautiful. If you look at the art, it's incredible and the stories are just like very relatable all the way around usually it relies around a, a girl who's pining for a guy uh, at some point and uh, he's kind of aloof or something like that he's a businessman he's successful uh, and then there's some sort of drama where she can't have him uh, or or something goes wrong in their relationship very simple stuff for the most part now when you get into the next stuff uh, jack kirby and joe simon decided to start their own company this was called mainline comics i'm gonna move some books aside here and uh, this is uh, from uh, Tomorrow's Publishing, the best of mainline comics. Now, this is pretty much all the Jack Kirby and uh, Joe Simon stuff uh, from this. Now, in here, they did a smattering of different things. You had a, 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 diff a book called Bullseye, Foxhole, uh, which was, was war stuff, police traps. So you get, a, you get a whole host of different genres in here. So you get war. You get this like, this is like a superhero kid. But in the wild, wild west, uh, basically, is what it is. There's uh, the police stuff. And in love is really the romance stuff in here. And there's like three stories. What's interesting is they do full comic uh, uh, stuff right here. And this one's the one I was talking about. It's really geared. I don't know that it's really geared towards women at all. It's about a baseball player. Um, and so this girl really loves this baseball player. And what happens is they get into a relationship. Her father owns the team. And, uh, and so he feels like he's getting promoted unduly and he really wants to make it on his own merit. He's like a, he's one of those like uh, stars that are really just about like, I want to work hard and be known for my work, uh, which is a great, great, noble, heroic character. Right. And so as he gets promoted where it seems like it's not for his own merit, it starts to grate on him and his performance as a baseball player starts to drop. Uh, at the end of it, he kind of like gets cut from the team. He wants to work his way up. He doesn't want special treatment. Uh, and uh, he's worried that he's going to lose her uh, because, like, he thinks that she likes him because of his uh, starness. But she likes him because of his grit. She likes him because of the fact that he's honorable. And, uh, of course, they get together because of that at the end. It's a beautiful uh, storyline, uh, and it's all about just, like, uh, masculinity. It's all about a guy doing what's right at the end of the day. And so this is the next sort of thing to get after the young romances, uh, which uh, which uh, is this just came out this last year and is pretty good stuff right here. Now, when you get into it, the final sort of uh, big collection of Kirby romance stuff is uh, the complete Kirby war and romance for, from Marvel Comics. And this just republishes the Atlas stuff in Omnibus Collection. Again, they did a really good job restoring the pages here. So when you get into it, you can see uh, just the beautiful color work they did. They did, they did similar for a lot of Steve Ditko's stuff. Uh, also, now what's what's maddening is this is called the complete Kirby War and Romance, but as mentioned, the Young Romance stuff was Kirby and done by Atlas early also, and this is just a continuation basically from here. Some of the stories from Young Romance one are reprinted in here, so there's a couple overlap, uh, but for the most part, that that took place like in like the 1940s through like 1956 and then there's a couple stories from 1959 this is 1959 onward and so it's i guess it's complete in terms of 1959 onward uh and so that's kind of interesting uh, delineation there i'm not sure why they chose uh to stop there uh, and not actually have all the complete uh kirby stuff that was done for the company or done for this uh particular uh, comic uh, at the time, but that's what they did for this. So you get a smattering in here, and what's neat is you get his war stories, and then eventually, like, uh, it collects the first uh, several issues of Sergeant Fury's Howling Commandos. But the love romances uh, is all collected in here from, uh, I think, issue 99 forward of what Jack Kirby did. And so it's some beautiful stuff all the way around. Now, that's it. There's really just four books of this. Now, there is called Dingbat and Love, which is, uh, uh, again, Tomorrow's Publishing did, and this is his 70s stuff. I don't have the book on me right here, so I can't show you. Uh, but that Dingbat and Love has a couple romance stories in it. They were unpublished, uh, as I recall. 
and uh, and they were restored by Tomorrow's Publishing uh, from his 70s work. But that's about it. The, this romance genre was a big thing from the 50, uh, 1940s and 1950s. I'll pile all the books for you so you can kind of see it a little better. And uh, you just need four books to get a good collection of Jack Kirby's work here. Good stuff. Uh, and it's all very much worth reading. This is great comic history right here. Uh, and you should enjoy these because the art is absolutely phenomenal for them. And the storytelling is just classic, uh, classic fare. And again, that's what we're trying to do with All Eyes on Ashley, my friends. So if you uh, like this kind of thing, if you're interested in checking out something different, if you're interested in doing something creative and artistic, we're trying to bring it back, guys. We are changing genres all the way around. And of course, uh, not subjecting ourselves just to one thing. Hope you enjoy this. And of course, hit the like and subscribe button, everybody. Back All Eyes on Ashley down in the description below. Have a good Super Bowl Sunday. We'll be back soon.